so excited about our next guest. In, in uh, 2001, she won DEF CON Cyber Ethical Survivor with an F contest. Get it? Surf Ivor contest. Making her the first woman in history to do so. A DEF CON apparently no longer just for boys. We welcome Anna Moore, who, or, or AKA Starla Pure Light. Hi, Anna. It's great yeah. to have you. Would you like me to call you Starla or Anna? I will answer to either one. Pure Heart. Did I say Pure Light? Pure Heart. Yeah. Where did Starla Pure Heart, the name, come from? Well, I mean, my original handle was Princess Zelda back in the old Nintendo chat rooms right. when we were all little kids. But I started getting hit on by a bunch of creepy people, so I changed it to the more gender neutral Star Road. Then I started hanging out in role play chat rooms, and it just didn't sound right, so I retained the star part, turned back into Starla, and the rest just sounded good. It has a good, it has a good role play, yeah. you know, RPG kind it of feel to the it. Theme. Yeah, absolutely. Now tell me about the cyber ethics contest that you won. Well, I mean, a lot of you have probably seen the show Survivor, where mm -hmm. you've got a bunch of people on an island and they kick each other off. Right. This is the same sort of thing, except instead of having to complete surviving challenges, you had to answer questions on cyber ethics and morals and things. Oh, interesting. It was really kind of an arbitrary contest. Yeah. Did the, they want you to win? Well, the or audience did, you, did. You were audience favorite? Yeah, yeah the judges kind of didn't. But they I think they were it. looking for more of a rogue. Right. You're not a rogue. I mean, look at you. You look like a normal uh, teenager. By the way, how old are you? I am 17. Today. Today. Happy birthday. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much for spending your birthday with us. That's really great. Well, thanks for having me. And you were, you were how old when you won the contest? I was 15. 15. Oh, man. <laughs> were you the youngest uh, person there? I imagine so. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I didn't take a poll or anything, but I know I was the youngest person on, in the contest. Well, the que now, the que so were questions more about ethics than they were about hacking itself? Yeah, I mean, there, there were almost no technical questions. Okay, okay. But you, would you consider yourself a hacker? Well, I mean, the term hacker applies to a great many things. I consider a hacker to be someone who has a great passion for a subject and a yearning to attain knowledge on that subject. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm not exactly elite hacksaw, but I do consider myself a hacker. Right. In the sense that you have this inquisitiveness, and, yeah. you, and you kind of kind of get under the surface of stuff and, pr and yeah. try to figure out what makes it tick. Mm -hmm. you, uh, you wrote a great article, and I want everybody to read it on our website. And you talk a, a little bit about that, and it sounds like you're more interested in the process than in, in the end point. Is that yeah. kind of typical of a hacker? Well, I think so, because if you're just focusing on the end point, you miss all the fun of the journey. Right. right. And the journey is really where it's at, because that's where you learn everything. Uh, you also talk about your beliefs uh, as a hacker, and you say that uh, you found the hacker ethic in Stephen Levy's great book, which is called yeah. Hackers, and a highly recommended book. We love that book. Mm -hmm. um, and the hacker ethic is, you know, information should be free, things like that. Yeah. W when you first read it, what was your reaction to that? Well, I thought it was really cool, because I'd never read a book like that that presented hacking in such a positive light before. Right. I mean, you know, I was raised in the 90s, the evil hackers, That's the right. bad people. Have you met people like Kevin Mitnick? And, uh, yeah, I have met people like Kevin Mitnick, reformed hacker types. Yeah. They're really cool. And have you met active kind of black hat hackers? Yeah, I ran across a few of those at DEF CON. Yeah. What do you think of them? Well, I mean, they're pretty okay people, but I think they are a bit misguided in their intentions. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, you uh, in uh, your hometown in Oklahoma, you hang mm -hmm. out with the 2600 folks there. Mm -hmm. They're hackers also. Yeah. Do you share information about breaking into things? I mean, do you talk about well, that kind of stuff? Most of the people I hang out with are white hat hackers, so mm -hmm. we may share techniques on breaking into each other's honey nets, perhaps. But You're more just in security then? Yeah. Interesting, yeah. I'm not really interested in, you know, going off and attacking the government or anything. Right, right. You don't look like the type, but you never know. Mm, appearances are deceiving. I know. I've learned that much. Uh, you write in the, the article, hacking is an art of poetry and beauty. Cracking is a criminal act. Mm -hmm. That's that's to you. That's the distinction. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You also say don't follow those that lose their vision. Mm -hmm. Have you met a lot of people like that? I have met a few. I mean, there are some people who will start out on the path of hacking with a clear end goal in mind, but along the way they will they will lose their vision. They'll get right. caught up in being reactionary and internet graffiti and stuff, and it just they lose it all. I thought, yeah, you, you, that was a really good characterization in your article. It, it, you do become a reactionary. Instead of pursuing the pure knowledge, mm -hmm. you start at, lashing out. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of things do you like to do? Oh, I like to play, the, play guitar. I play a lot of video games, probably way too many. Gaming always leads to hacking. We know this. Well, of course. Yes, as parents. 
Your dad, your dad doesn't mind that you play all those video games? Oh, no, he supports it. He, he, he looks like a game. He might play a little bit of games himself. Yeah. Yeah. My parents are cool that way. Are they? Yeah, that's great. And you also, I know, first in Taekwondo black belt. Yes, I've which, been taking Taekwondo for five years. That's pretty impressive. So you have an outside life. Mm -hmm. but how much time would you say you spend in front of the computer every day? Oh, every day, probably somewhere between two and four hours. So that's not terrible. Well, you, depending on what day it is. Yeah. What games do you like to play? Oh, I really like Quake 3 for the PC. Mm -hmm. I want to get Neverwinter Nights, but I'd say my favorite game of all time is Final Fantasy VI for the Super Nintendo. Really? Yeah, that's yeah. classic, classic My, my game. daughter's 11 years old and wants to follow in your footsteps, by the way. Yeah. And she likes Final Fantasy X. She's been playing that like crazy. Oh, right. It's a pretty amazing game. I've not yet played X, but I really want to. Yeah, I think you'll like it a lot. Yeah, cool. it's pretty amazing. Another thing you say, don't be stupid. What do you mean, don't be stupid? Well, there are a lot of stupid things you can do as a hacker because... You know, knowledge is power, and right. with that power, you can use it for stupidity or right. for creative force. Right. But, you know, an example of stupidity would be going off into facing a website that you're going to agree with just right. because you feel it's wrong. Do you think hackers have a role? We're, we're living in a society now where there's kind of a, a, tug, a, a tug of war between privacy rights advocates on the one hand mm -hmm. and a government that is increasingly kind of trying to uh, edge its way into uh, our, our daily mm -hmm. lives. Do you think hackers have a role in that battle at all? Well, I think that hackers help to self-regulate that battle because, you know, they're usually the first ones to come out with patches to holes. Right, right. And that sort of thing. Right. In that respect, the disclosure of information is very important because otherwise it never gets patched at all. Information deserves to be free. That's the first rule of a hacker. Yeah, yeah. and that's a lot harder in this day and age. It is. It's still an ideal to look to. You're going to go to college uh, in a couple of years? Yeah. I yeah. mean, I'm hoping to go this year. This year semester. already? Mm hmm Wow. Do you know where you're going to go and it. what you're going to major in? Well, I would like to major in robotics. I'd like to go to OU for my first two years and transfer out to MIT if they will have me. Excellent. And if I can and bring it together enough student aid. And, and uh, uh, robotics, not computer science. Why robotics? Well, I feel that the field of computer science has become somewhat limited by the computers themselves. Right. It, has a design stereotype. Robotics is such a, it's such a new field. It's still being born that you don't have stereotypes in the design and you're only limited by what you can imagine. Very cool. Do you think of yourself as a role model to young women? I mean, there, yeah. right now it's a boy's world, you know, this, this yeah. computer world, and even especially the hacker's world. Do you think uh, there's a reason why more girls aren't involved? Would you like to lead well, them in that direction? I think that everybody should learn about hacking and become a hacker in some field, mm -hmm. whether that's music or poetry mm -hmm. or computers. Mm -hmm. As for girls and hacking, I think they just, they probably don't know about it. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you're a girl and you're supposed to be into the backstreet boys and who's cool and who's dating who, not computers and, you know, Quake 3. So what would you tell my daughter? She's 11 years old, and right now she kind of is starting mm -hmm. to get thinking about whether she, she should be cool or whether she should be smart. What, do, what would you tell her? I would tell her to be smart. Being cool is not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Any hack in the world you could do, what would it be? Well, I had to think about that one for a while, but this is a little far-fetched, but I would write a self-propagating virus that would go onto computers, retain the data on the hard drives, but replace the operating systems with Red Hat Linux. <laughs> Now, I like that hack. Let's think about how to implement that. If you want to read more, Anna, you're, you're just wonderful. I really you. appreciate your time. Thank you for coming out here Thanks and joining us me. on the Screensavers. I'm going to make sure my daughter sees the tape of this show. Cool. To hear more about what Anna has to say about the world of hacking, check out her article. It really is great at thescreensavers.com.